People saw Fitzroy continue on their winning form, their example to the rest of the teams in the league with their ability to be able to team well, to be able to get past one player, we see them here, and go for a kick to position all the time. They play beautifully to position and just play genuine old-fashioned football. Here uh, is Gary Wilson. Gary Wilson uh, kicked six goals yesterday, and fortunately for him. Uh, and there's Quinlan, nice pass to Quinlan now. Quinlan, as soon as they get the ball at the moment, just goes straight back to centre because he's in devastating form. Here's Robert Flower without Ick and Flower and uh, one other fellow, Chris Conley, for a while. They certainly would have been in a great deal of trouble. But uh, Fitzroy, they are a genuine team at the moment. They play beautifully together. Uh, they kick the ball so well. And the ability to be able to beat teams who want a handball I mean, I don't think that the Melbourne style of game will ever beat Fitzroy as long as, you know, they keep on playing because kicking gets them 40 and 50 yards away from it. Yes, Lewis? Bob, you've given uh, Fitzroy a tremendous rap. What's wrong with Melbourne? Well, I think that the Melbourne style of play against that type of team is not right at all. It's not good enough. I don't think that handball, when you've got to do four or five handballs and you are continu continually pressed by an opposition team, which Fitzroy are uh, very good at. They play very close and harass you into, into losing possession. When you're caught 40 and 50 yards away and the team who get the ball can kick it to position, you will lose possession and lose style of the game all you're, the way. You're the great master coach, Bob, and I mean that with great respect. Now, is Ron, Ron Barassi has had fantastic success. <coughs> do you think, but do you think that they, they just don't have the players to play any other game? No, I think that's his style of coaching, and it's probably been successful, but I don't think it'll be successful with this team. Okay. Although, unfortunately, yesterday, one must admit that he, that he did have, first of all, Templeton and Jarrett out, and Wilson and Bamford were supposedly under a cloud. Would that be right, Crackers? Yes. Weren't they going to play or something? Were they needled up before the game? Is there something wrong that there aren't sufficient players around there they, that we continually have to put unfit players out onto the field? that you have to have subterfuge and you have the fellow ring up on Friday night saying, I want to play tomorrow night. Whatever happened to the selection committees when they pick 20 fit players of a Thursday night? What happened to that business? Well, Is that all gone? Is that in the same instance they that Greg the Smith rang up now, and said he, did, he wanted to play and the old doctors had ruled him out on Thursday night and he almost best in the ground for, July, uh, for the Swans yesterday. So, you know, Wrong answer, when a player man. runs out of the ground, uh, he's fit. And if he says he's fit, he should be fit. What about ground. Peter Moore? How does he shaping up? Well, Peter Moore... Uh, I've got Peter Moore down here for the first and the fourth quarters he played quite well in. Now, he started off very well, Peter Moore, but then uh, I think he had a strong collision with uh, Michael Conlon at one stage. And if one player was ever crucified yesterday, it was Conlon, because he is a very strong player. I don't think he does much wrong, uh, Conlon, at all. And in fact, when he tackles, he never seems to get the free kick, but if people tackle him, He's immediately under the cloud from the umpire. Your vote, the Bobby. Vote yesterday, I gave uh, one vote to Gary Wilson of Fitzroy, who kicked six goals in the forward pocket. At one stage, looked it was carried off at one stage, and uh, looked as though he wasn't going to come back on again. But still managed six goals. I gave two votes to Grant Laurie, who really is a magnificent centre half back. There's no two ways about it. His ability to be able to mark the ball, to read the play, and to be able to attack from the half back line is outstanding. And I gave three votes to Bernie Quinlan who is without doubt, I think, the finest kick that I've ever seen, Bernie Quinlan. His uh, ability to be able to... Hey? What about yourself? Oh, well, on the run, he might be able to kick quite oh, as well as me on the run, Jack. But as a set shot, really, oh, well, there isn't anyone at all. Thank, thank you all. No, thank he would you. kill Doug Wade as a kick. Oh, thank you, one and all. OK, can we check the progressive voting? We find that Andrew Purser of Footscray leads from Terry Wallace. A number of...